So there are a few ways to make this into an array. One is to do it this way. Another is to create the array. <laughs> and then duck and cat. <laughs> I just feel like I'm making it worse. Oh, nobody's going to trust me anymore. They're going to think I really write code this way. Somebody's going to walk watch in the video and they're going to be like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. Hey, everyone. How you doing? Today, we're going to talk about a tweet I wrote where I saw some code at work. And I wrote pseudocode about the solution I came up with, but I want to explain how the code was and why I would make a decision like that because nobody would write code like that. I'm not going to recommend somebody write code like that unless I have a good reason for it. And there are good reasons for it, and it could open up a discussion. But it was me reviewing a PR saying, hey, if you're going to want to do it this way, this is my suggestion for you. So here's an example of that. This is pseudocode, okay? But this is what the original code would look like, something like this. So you have a ternary here. As you can see, there's a question mark in one of these guys. And then in here, you have some code. I even wrote this in the style that it was written in at work. So this isn't my style, if you're thinking that. And so we got a value here, right? And it switches to a different value if there's some Boolean that's true. Okay, that's fine. There, there are other ways of doing this now that I think about it. Yes, there are other ways that we could have done this even better. Why did I not point that out? Okay, it's fine. After I read code and talk about it, I ducked it, essentially. It's called rubber duck coding. And what rubber duck coding is a way to essentially talk to a rubber duck about your problems and you'll solve the problem yourself because you already know the solution and you already know what's wrong with it. You just don't realize it because you haven't done the work to investigate. And even if you have done the work to investigate, as soon as you vocalize it, you start to figure out things on your own, which is what just happened to me here. We're having this situation. Then the ternary returns something exact. Now, when I see these two things, I think, okay, this needs to be some kind of function potentially, or some repeated process, but it's only used here. So this duplication is fine, right? But it's duplicated like this uniquely in this particular scenario, but it's the same concept that is used in other places. And I said, well, we're going to use the same concept in other places. There's got to be a better way to do it. And I'll start calling that out on future PRs. But first I want to find a solution. So I suggested this solution and this solution is really awkward to read at first. It takes a little bit of time. If you had this all over your code base, it probably make a lot more sense, but there are better ways of writing this. I suggested something that people are like, I would never write code that way. I wouldn't want to deviate from what other people write. Yeah, I don't either. I want to write code that's readable. And there are parts of this that are more readable than the left side. So the left side is e easy to read because you can read it from top to bottom. You can go straight from the top to the bottom and read it and figure out what it's doing, but it's a little bit confusing because of this stuff here. I blame that on the formatting. If I was writing this formatted my way, it would look a little different. So it looked like this. And to me, this would make it more clear what's going on. And I'm just going to copy paste this real quick. So this is how I would have written it, which would have made it a little bit easier to read. But this dot to dot on an object like this, where you're returning another object through a Boolean, this is a little confusing. I don't know if you knew this, but if you do dot to dot false, that's okay. Completely fine. It just gets nullified in the object. It doesn't exist anymore. This also does doesn't exist and this also doesn't exist it is very nice now if you do that in an array it will give you an error it won't work correctly but I think there's an instance where you could do it for an array if you do it with false it would put false in there but not dot directly on the false I think it would just complain that you can't do it so the dot 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 I should call it the spread syntax doesn't work the same on objects as they do arrays which is honestly a big problem I would expect that these two would work exactly the same but they don't so let's look at this example this is my fix it and I can fix the formatting so that it looks exactly like what I would have expected the first time. And that will help, at least me, it'll help me understand it better. And if I don't understand, I can't explain it to you. So don't think, oh, you understand it, but I don't. It's like, I, I can explain it to you, so then it's easier to understand. And I would actually write the top of this differently too if I was doing it, it would be something like this. And I'm just gonna leave it that way now, uh, but I'll put the comma there. There you go. I feel like I'm trolling people, but I'm absolutely not trolling anyone. Would really write the code this way if I was writing it. If I was writing this code, I would write it this way. Although not every project I'm on is going to format it exactly the same, so it might look different. So what's going on here? Like why this looks like completely different than what you saw on the left side. And the reason it's different is because I created a function for all the logic that was there. So every bit of logic, I just replaced the value one part with an optional key here. And that's the only thing I changed. But how did I make it an in inline function where you can do that? And I did that by passing this in the second arc. So let's completely forget about this. Let's not think in this way. Let's first talk about the way that I guarantee you, I'm going to rewrite this in a way everybody would solve it. I would expect to see this solution in a code base. If you don't do it this way, you are breaking my expectations. If you did it the way I just did it now, that's interesting. I mean, it's not the way I would have done it, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's the way I'm thinking about it. I've never made that suggestion before. It was a solution I came up with literally on the fly to solve a problem that I was having within the confines of the code base. And I'll talk about that but before I get to that. And hopefully you don't just leave the video and be like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I will explain that. I want to get into why I would even get to that point first. So this is how I would probably write it too in the code base. Something like this, where you have a your ternary that we had before, 
So before you had this turn area here, has stuff, and then there's a turn area, and then you basically return this one or duplicate of itself. Instead, where this value one is, that's the only thing that changes between them. We're going to make those a string called key, and that's going to be the key for our object. Now, you don't have to call it key. In fact, I would have suggested it be named something else in that one. You could name it prop name and a bunch of other things. It's called key in this instance because it is a key value pair. This is the key. So I'm just using it there. And typically, that might be a little confusing if it's done out of context like because it might not be a key it might be a label or a name or something else that makes more sense in this case it is very generic so if you have stuff then it's value one otherwise it's value two and then it's the exact same code and you return that this is how i would typically do it if i was going to solve this problem and i would only do it this way because that's how people would expect the solution to be done and they wouldn't make any complaints if i turn in a pr like this now how i would really like to do this is completely different and before i show you that solution i'm going to show you this solution because you're going to first have to understand why this solution is bad to understand why that solution is better but it's the exact same solution i say exact same but it's obviously not because then if it was the exact same then why would there be a good and bad so this solution is different because it has a trade-off to it one we did fix it if you look here I don't have this const thing and then the return, but this is indirection, okay? This is indirection where it's down here, but the value's like up here. The reason I don't like the syntax is because there could be code here. There could be a lot of code here. And you don't know what this key is unless you look up and find it. Or maybe if I hover over, okay, well, it does tell me because of TypeScript here, but if I actually typed it and all this stuff, it might show different values here. It's actually pretty simple right now because there's only two possible values. Code is not always written that simply. But I mean, this looks really simple. The problem is this isn't a function and none of the other functions in the code base have an explicit return. They all have implicit return where the return is implied. And that's why it was written this way in the first place because there was never an explicit return. So the person writing the code was writing it in a way that it would fit this mindset. Now, this code that I did here shows you now this isn't a function. This is a little bit different now that's in a function because you might want to basically take a value here. And so this would be your value. It would not be one of these stuff. So it'd be maybe be like has stuff would be coming i think in this case it was like a right to left kind of thing has stuff could be like it was it would have been art is rtl but i don't like that i would have rather done is right to left or maybe even name some kind of language indicator that there's a, probably a name for if the text goes from right to left it's probably not just right to left but this it would be a boolean like this this is a little bit confusing because it's not the positive it's actually the negative the standard would have been left to right i'm not saying that's the right way to do it. i'm saying we're english speakers writing this code so for us is left to right would technically be the true one but it's right to left in here the code like had something like this and I don't want to get into all the specifics because this is a representation of what the code was like not the actual code itself in this instance there's a lot more going on here and what I want to point out is that this starts to become less easy to read when this is in a function and there are other things around it and none of the code is written this way either every single bit of code is an automatic return here it's a, it's called an implicit return because the return is implied it's this code here but there's a function wrapper around it and there's nothing after it you can, you can put parentheses I would recommend putting them but because it's this one particularly the project uses prettier there are no parentheses because they they like to remove things that are very necessary to understanding how the code works in blocks but that's that's a completely separate topic so we have these two turn areas and i was like what can i do to remove this const here when i see a const or a var or a let in a code base especially a, a var or let okay those are code smell 100 i would ask to have them removed 100 of the time unless there's a very specific reason for them existing there there are lots of ways around them there are even cheap ways around them i wouldn't recommend this okay but you could do this <laughs> and you can get around having a const here just put it up in the arg set a default value and then you don't need it anymore nobody's expected to pass this in so then you're good right but uh, that's not a good pattern it's a horrible pattern but it does work um although it would confuse anybody using typescript because you would see that key there and be like oh i'm supposed to pass this but there's a default value set based on the previous prop value and if the args change order or anything like that this code completely breaks all right this in this context this started to become more difficult to read and obviously this is such a simple example it doesn't matter it's not going to be that much harder to read but coming up with the syntax and trying to write how you would write this in the grand scheme of things and everything i was like ah oh, maybe there's a better way to do it and i thought about it and i made this suggestion and again this is not what goes in the code base this is a suggestion this is hey can we write the code that you duplicated here in a way that it's not duplicated and also fits with the design of the rest of the code base of this particular project that was not using explicit returns. So I don't want to break any of the current ideology of the code or how it's been written. And so I'm trying to think up a solution and I came up with this weirdo one, but it's not that weird, you no know, functional programming. So what I did was I made the function, here it is right there. And then I immediately called it and I passed this stuff into it. You can probably tell what's wrong here. It's the same code, but now it's topsy-turvy, right? This should have been at the top 
but now it's at the bottom. So we've defined some anonymous function, which is not even reusable and it's inline and it describes what we're wanting to do with the information that we were given, except that the actual information that we're passing into it happens way down here at the bottom. Now, if you use react, this should look extremely familiar to you because this is the second arg. This is essentially what it looks like to have a second arg in react where you've got some kind of function. And then as a second argument, you have something like this has stuff. You still have your Boolean check at the top, something like this, but there's something that's being listened to in the observable and that's at the bottom and it's not really an observable because if it's a fake observable but it's the same concept and that's how a react hook would work is you got the second argument you got to worry about this reminds me of that kind of code and i don't like it i prefer i want to know what i'm listening to first and then execute this function when one of them changes rather than here's the function that executes when a change is made on some stuff but i don't know what it is and then at the bottom is, here's the stuff we're listening to and when this changes i go ahead and rerun this function but it's not an actual observable in react just to be clear i don't want to go into the specifics of a react it's not an actual observable what happens is the component completely re-renders and it reruns that function only if it notices that one of the second arg values has changed. But again, it's backwards because it does the check first and then it runs the function. But when you're writing the code, you write the function first and then the things it's checking below it, which is really confusing. So I, I don't like this either, but this is a functional approach. We are creating a function and this is not occurring, right? There's not a function that takes a function, but this is a function that takes a value and the value is being passed in immediately as the function is called. Let's talk about the benefits of this. As a developer, if I came in the code base and I saw something, I was maybe like, what the heck? Seriously, who thought this was a good idea? That'd be the first thing that crosses my mind. So I want to make that clear because my tweets, it doesn't seem like it's clear. People are thinking, why would you make this suggestion? And I'm thinking this is an interesting solution to the problem that was given. And I would be OK with it if we wanted to put it in there. But if I was looking at this as a person, I'd be like, what the heck is this? I would never expect to see this kind of code. I would also be curious about the developer that did it because I want to know what else that person's written, not in a bad way, because I want to see what interesting solutions that person has come up with that might improve the code base in a way that makes it more readable. But in this case, what I'm seeing is this function, and I don't know if this is more readable yet. I have never put this into production yet, but I can tell you there are some things I don't like about it and is that this is down here and not here, but it is 100% tightly coupled there. And it is because this value and this key are tightly coupled. You only want it in this one instance and you want to make it not reusable, but technically reusable because you have two different values that can execute the same code. So reusable in the sense that given a specific function, you could have two different outcomes based on the values that were passed. So this function is exactly the same as this return statement. But instead of it being in the return statement, this whole thing gets returned. So this is there's a function out here that's being called, right? And it has the right to left or whatever, which is our has stuff in this case. And, and so that's coming in here. Uh, actually, I don't need to wrap it. I don't need to wrap it. This is this should be readable the way it is. Although typically I would drop this. I'm just not going to drop it for this particular example. Would this work? Am I missing something? Expected semicolon. Is it because I made an inline function without defining what called it. Yeah, there's no const here. So it wouldn't be a function like this. This is deeply nested in some kind of object as a property. There's some prop here and then that ends up having this function here. That is what's actually executing in the code. And what's important here is that when this code executes, it can be written a little bit differently. They, they, you don't have to tab this over specifically. You just put the comma here so it can tab over a little bit more. It is one piece of code instead of multiple pieces of code. There are some other things about it, which are nice. So let's remove this and just talk about this code here. It is nice. It's one piece of code. This whole thing gets returned. So it's an implicit return. Great. You don't have a separate return they get to go look for that could also be wrapped in the if statement and could have other issues in it. You don't have to look for that. The other benefit of writing the code this way is that it is a function. And so it's not duplicated code like we had before. It does avoid the duplication, which I would think it's better in this case because we don't ever want these to be different. And because we don't ever want them to be different, we shouldn't duplicate the code there. It still has this problem here of this code could be written differently and it should have its own ternary instead. And I don't know why it doesn't now that I'm thinking about it. And I wish I would have made that suggestion. Okay. So we're just avoiding that piece of it. Just pretend that's not there and that's for some reason this code was necessary the way it is and the reason it might be necessary the way it is, is I wrote this as pseudocode so I don't actually know what the original code was and that might have not had this problem and the other benefit of doing it this way is that we tightly couple the things that need to be tightly coupled the function itself is tightly coupled to the value that you're passing in which is a dynamic value but that's still fine and this is a pattern you do find in JavaScript. Actually, it's extremely common in ES5 JavaScript, which is what most people transpile into anyway. It's common because it's what you would have. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but it's called a self-executing function and they call it, but you have a self-calling function like this and there's some code in it. This is a very common thing. You'll see it on every website, especially ones that have been bundled. You will see this. And what's happening here is anything that needs a dependency injection, like window, 
would actually be injected like this. And then that way this window could be whatever it needs. It could be global. It could be whatever, right? A global this it could be anything. That's the important piece of this is that this is actually not new code. This is code that's been there forever. I've never written it this way. I actually like to avoid writing it this way, but maybe I don't like writing it this way because it's not written like this. So it's not a new idea. It's been around for a long time. It's a functional way of doing things in some ways and some ways not. But I think there's a word for this is iffy, right? Immediately invoked function expression. This is a thing right here. Immediately invoked function expression. And so that's what this is. It is a well-known computer science fact so I'm not actually developing anything you're saying like I don't want to write code in a way that people don't understand or whatever this is literally the fundamentals if you go to any bundle and you look at it this is right there it's not that crazy. I don't want you to think that because that's not how people would write it, you can never do it that way. That's not the case. You got to get confirmation from your team and make sure of this stuff. So how would I actually write this if I was really going to write it? And now we're getting to the real nitty gritty of, hey, I'm going to show you something cool. So how would I actually write this? I would write it with a pipe function. Now, I wouldn't write the pipe function inline and I wouldn't try to use a reduce inline, but you could do that too. I guess we could write it with the reduce first and then write it with the pipe. And then I can finally fix the code. This code is actually able to be improved. So how would we do this with the reduce? There are a few other ways of writing this code. Let's just go over some other ways we can write this code. I, I still want to use implicit return and we're going to use a map, which means we need to make this into an array, right? So there are a few ways to make this into an array. One is to do it this way. Another is to create the array <laughs> and then duck and cat. <laughs> I just feel like I'm making it worse. Oh, nobody's going to trust me anymore. They're going to think I really write code this way. Somebody's going to walk watching the video and they're going to be like, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm like, you don't know what you're talking about. This is another way to write this code. Hang on. I'll fix it. Yeah, I don't like semicolons, but you need one when you do the weird stuff like this. If you, if you ever write code like this and you, you need a semicolon here, you know you're doing it wrong. <laughs> That's not exactly true, though. Okay, so we made an array and concatted in this one value into the array. Then we ran a map on that and uh, applied the value to what we want to the object. Then we did a find boolean. Then we can return this whole thing and it's fine. Find boolean, what does that do? Is this little trick I know. Uh, find boolean basically takes the first true value from an array. And this value is true, therefore we just take that one value. Even better way of doing this. And you could do it like this, but who, who's gonna do the get the zeroth index whatever crap? No, I don't like the syntax. I really don't like the syntax. And, and we're specifically putting a magic number in there, which is an index. I I don't want that i and i don't want to define what an index is and then just put like first index or some junk like that like i know it's zero okay i actually don't want the zeroth index i want the first value in the array that has a value in it that's actually what i care about but we could do at zero which yes it does use a magic number but it is a function now that we're calling which has some kind of functionality that's a little bit different like you can get the last value like this with at one you can't do it with this this is if you want to do this you, you can't put minus one in here you can but it doesn't work the way you expect as far as i know maybe i'm wrong okay maybe i'm wrong but then why have the at function as far as i know minus one will get the index minus one which doesn't exist unless you define something as index minus one but as an object property not part of the array itself the list only goes from zero to the highest 32-bit value that you can get i think it's four billion something so if you want to do it with normal you'd have to get the array length right and it wouldn't be like that it would be like this and we don't even have an array right now there's no array to get the length of because we're just defining it in line so this is a problem right because you can't do this so at minus one is great because you can just do that but that's we're not getting the last value we're getting the first value which you could do at zero to get exactly for the first value but even better if you want to make the code not break, although it can break because the boolean function doesn't necessarily typecast everything to a boolean the way you expect, but this way would get you the first value in the array that has a value. Instead of just the first value in the array, it'll get the first value that has a value. That evaluates to true is what I should be saying. And this does evaluate to true. Great. If you had an undefined or null or even a false in there, it won't catch it. And sometimes you might want a false. And so this won't work in that case. But again, these are little tricks I know, and I don't always use them. <laughs> and in this case, this is, <laughs> I purposely wrote this bad. Uh, you could write it like this. It just, I don't like creating an array and adding a single value to it like this inline, unless there's a good reason for it. And it doesn't make sense here. It really doesn't. I, mean, I don't need the parentheses there, but technically like this indicates that there's a one single value here that could be useful, could be not. I, I don't know if I'd include them. Probably not. Unless I had a second value then. Yeah. And I might include the parentheses just so you could easily put a second value. I don't know, but this is like one idea, right? I would definitely not want to write the code like this. Would you argue that this is better than this? I think it is because you can visually see we have a value. We convert that value to what we want. And then we just pulled the one value off. And if you really want to be fine. Okay. I did it there Add zero there. Now, you know, there's only one value coming off and it's the, it's the, the first value. The only reason we're writing it like this is you can get a pipeline. So you can see it from top to bottom without defining anything and getting an implicit return. We are solving the challenge of keeping the code base looking exactly the same without having this funky syntax. There is another way to write this. You're not going to like this. Okay. But a lot of you guys like async await. And if you like async await, then this is going to be a great solution for you. So we'll just do a promise dot resolve. And yes, I'm writing this in my style now, but we're going to resolve this guy. Yeah, we're just right up 
here. We're resolving that. And then we're doing this. I really didn't expect I would go into all these examples. And then we don't need that zero anymore. Done. But you need to await it. And I don't like to put the weight there. I would actually wrap it like this. So it's clear like what is being awaited. And it's this entire section. And then I would return from there. And then you'd have to put async on the function too. And then finally you're good. But then you have to wait on the thing that's calling the function and then await somewhere else and then await and async again. And then don't worry, we're not done yet. You have to async and then await again on the next thing that's being called from that. And then we're not done yet. The next thing from that also needs to be async awaited. And guess what? You don't control the code, so you can't even do that. But then you need to async await on the next thing again. <laughs> I hope I've made my point clear. So we don't want to make it async, but this would do it. Promise.resolve sends this value down to the then, and then you can take the then. It's a function that you've created in line. Again, we are solving the problem of having it be more readable with async, but not include variables that we are creating with const letter var and specifically const const is the one i'm trying to avoid here which const is typically okay this is fine i would never point this out in a code review i will point this out in a code review this needs work okay this needs a lot of work and i made an interesting suggestion because i thought it would work for the code base but there are better ways of doing it and i mean i could have written this but it was like too much effort i was like can we write it differently maybe like this or another way that works too, which was my suggestion. And the only reason I tweeted about this is I thought it was really interesting because who, who would ever suggest this? And what are the trade-offs? Like, why would you want this versus some other way? This really did fit with the way the code base is right now. And it could be a good pattern. I don't know, could make sense. Kind of awkward though. And I would actually prefer a different pattern. So let's get by this promise method. So how would I actually write this? Looking at our array example, it's actually gonna be very similar. Even though the array example I already said is bad, it's, it's gonna be similar. So we're gonna do a pipe. There are multiple ways to write this pipe function. One way to write the pipe function is is the exact same as our example here, where you pass the thing at the bottom, you have to create the function to create the function, and then when you call the function, you pass the value into it. I'm not gonna write a curried pipe function. We're gonna write a regular old pipe function. And this pipe function is going to say that the args are executed in order. Okay, the args are executed in order. And that is typically what a pipe function does. The only difference is this thing would normally come in here. And I don't wanna write that. So we take this function here, get rid of all that. This is much cleaner already. And you put it here. This is probably, if I was gonna write the code and we had an available pipe function, I would write it like this. It's gonna get into a really cool topic about why there's a better way of doing this too. Why is the pipe not green? This pipe should be green. Pipe equals, oh, now it's green, great, fine. Oh, that's blue. Now I put a const. And that made it green or whatever. I don't know why VS Code is different from Sublime Text for that. All right, so I've got a pipe function and the pipe function basically says for every argument, basically wrap them in each other. And this is where the reduce function comes in. I was gonna write it, but then I found out you could just do it with a map on the other example. But if you were really doing it where you had multiple functions been called, then you would wanna reduce. In this case, we only have one, so it doesn't really matter. But we would have this, we would basically reduce all these functions and wrap each one like an onion around the initial value that we started with. And the initial value is a value one or value two. And again, this suffices, this does solve the problem. But you're wondering where this pipe function comes from. Yes, it doesn't exist. You have to import it or add it to your code base or something like that. And again, this one is a pipe function that takes the first value and executes through the chain, which is not necessarily what you want, right? Your pipe function is supposed to be a transducer pipeline creator that then takes a second value here. And that value is then returns a function. And then the, when you call that function, then it executes that value throughout the whole pipeline. Or you give it another pipeline. And then when that pipeline receives a value, then it passes that value in. That's how the pipe is supposed to work. There's another tool in JavaScript that can solve this for us. Now it doesn't exist today. And it sucks because I've already written an article on this. The pipeline operator is now. I wrote this article in 2017, back when I used to spend 18 hours writing one article and getting really nothing from it. Yeah, so I made this whole thing. My first one was called Make Poop from Food Emojis. It's a really fun one. If you want to learn functional programming in JavaScript, I teach you how to do it. And I use the array operators, not necessarily these crazy ones. But I also show you how you would do it with these crazy ones, as well as the array operators. And then I also have a transducer talk, which I talk about the same kind of stuff. Although the transducer talk, I actually wrote a transducer library for the talk and benchmarked it as part of the talk to show the difference of if you wrote something very simply, yourself how would it perform versus something that was already packaged up and has all this extra functionality built into it that was also a lot of work because to explain transducers in the talk i had to write a transducer library and they're not easy they're absolutely not easy this pipe thing that one's super easy to write but everything around it is not but you can see here like there's you can read the article yourself but there there are ways of taking this and making it easier to write with the pipeline but there's also this and let's go into what that is so javascript has this thing called a pipeline operator and the pipeline operator would be basically taking a value like that and i write 
write this here. And what this is a thing that says pass this value into this function here. So whatever is passed here, it takes a function and you can pass whatever you want into it. And so we're giving it this function and it takes the value from up here and passes it down. Just like the promise, just like the array map, just like that kind of stuff. It's essentially an array map with a reduce on it behind the scenes. This is an array map function but it would essentially be a reduce but that's what this is same as a pipe operator but it's a little bit more vertical and makes a little bit more sense but instead of having to create a const here and return a value instead what we can do is we can remove that comma that's unnecessary then we can take our value and just pipe it into a function that then does what we expect it to do so what's the difference between these two one this is implicit this can be implicit return nobody can add their extra code junk in here and mess it up and make it basically unmaintainable which is what typically happens as soon as you break out and you do a const like this and a return here tons of stuff can go wrong in this code base as soon as you do that you're creating you're not creating tech debt yet but you're creating the potential for tech debt and that's why i like to avoid this const keyword and creating variables all over the place where i can because as soon as you do that the code can immediately become unreadable you're going to get indirection you're going to have all these other problems and this does have indirection the key is up here defined up here and it's used down here and you might say well that's all in the same thing it's not this is more clear the key is defined as a value we are are giving a function which then takes any kind of value the specifically the one that was passed through the pipeline you know that because there's a pipeline operator icon there and then we're going to create an object based off of the value it's more clear to go from top to bottom we already established that which is why nobody likes this syntax but you can get this same functionality in JavaScript with this pipeline operator that's not actually officially part of the language yet. And there's a ton of drama about this because they're not doing it the way that I would expect it to be done. And then it's not just me, it's other people that work with pipelines. It's not being whatever, I don't wanna get into it. And then you could define a variable, but as soon as you do this, you are in the tech debt land. You're not there yet. There's no tech debt. This is absolutely zero tech debt today. And it could be zero tech debt in the future. What happens is somebody's gonna take this. They're gonna say, ah, that's how you solve the problem. Great, copy, paste add my own crap to it, mess with this stuff, put it somewhere else in a code base. I saw that pattern, I'm gonna use that somewhere else. And all of a sudden you're gonna have code bases with tech debt because of this pattern. And I don't like this pattern because it creates tech debt. I have seen it way too many times. Anytime I see anything like this, I can tell nobody knows what they were doing by the time they got to this code and started writing it. Like nobody understands this anymore. They're gonna have to sit there for 20 minutes trying to read through the code, trying to figure out what it does. In this case, it doesn't matter. But I'm looking at the bigger picture and looking forward and saying, I have seen lots of code in my life and I've seen why the code gets that way. And I've seen that this particular operator and this one too tend to cause these problems. There's also this one too. I also don't like this one. And this one too, this one causes problems. I, I prefer to do this if I can and be very explicit about what I'm looking for. That way it's obvious to developers. I mean, in the past I've done this before. I've done this, okay. And I've done like this and I'd be like, I I'd do something like this. Uh, I think it was, yeah, this, All right, I would do something like this. Yeah, else, uh, so, so, so this would be like, you know, value one. And then I'd be else value two, like you're in a comment. And I'm like, why am I doing that? Why don't I just put the else value two like this? Just be explicit. You don't have to put the comment there. And this just documents it better for people that are trying to figure out what the heck your code is doing. But the point is that we're trying to talk about this and why you would normally write this code. I would write this code, okay? I'm telling you right now, I would write this code that you're seeing on the screen. But that doesn't mean that's how I want it to be written. And that also doesn't mean that's a good pattern. It's actually a very horrible pattern. It's a, like the worst pattern out of all the ones I've shown you is this one with this constant return keyword. Even though for this use case, it's, it seems like, oh, this is completely reasonable. This is why I made the suggestion. Again, you don't know the full context of who I'm talking to and why I'm making the suggestion. I thought it would be fun to have a discussion about this. He can write it this way. I don't care. At some places I've worked at, people just verbatim say, oh, he suggested this. I should do it this way. Uh, and I had to be careful of those situations. This one, it wasn't a problem, but at other companies I've worked at, uh, people have basically not understood what I was asking. And then they see, see me put some kind of like pseudocode example in there. And they literally copied the pseudocode example. That's not what I wanted. I was trying to give you an example of different ways of writing something. I wanted you to solve this on your own. And then they ended up solving it in the exact way I did, which I was like, his teammate's gonna be like, oh, why'd you write it this way? He's like, oh, Kevin told me that. Oh, that's not my fault. You freaking put the code in there. I just made a suggestion that this is one possible way you could do it. And there are other ways that it could be better. You find a solution for it, but then you come out and you just make it my way and then you blame me for it. So I don't know if that's ever happened, probably has, but I'm just explaining, this is why I'm such, this is why I'm going into so much depth about it and why I'm explaining that I would have written it this way too, okay? I'm like you guys, I know how to do this. I've worked at lots of companies and I work in other code bases and I do 
lots of PR reviews all the time and I've written code like this. Okay. I'm not crazy. So this to me is still better though. If I had the option of using this pipeline operator, I would immediately be like, no, nah, just put it like this. There's no reason to write it like this. Why would you write it like this? This allows you to now add extra crap to it. I don't want you adding extra crap. I basically want you saying if you had a very specific intent of this, then put it in there and, and make sure that happens. And if you want to add extra crap, fine, add another pipeline, add another pipeline and do the rest of the work that you want to do. Put the rest of the crap that you're going to put in here and modify it from that point. There's no reason to do it the way we're doing it. We're doing this and we're going to start making the code really difficult to understand. And then we're going to start adding stuff to it. Then we're going to keep adding stuff to it. And it's going to grow and grow. And then you get this 2000 line file minimum. Maybe it's a 10,000 line files. So those are not uncommon, right? Or even a thousand line file, which is still bad. Uh, it could be one of those where it just has too much code that's written in a way that's unreadable in the long term because you didn't write it. This looks so easy for me right now. I'm looking at this code. I'm like, I completely understand this. This is this makes sense. This code, I would also look at it and be like, oh, I completely understand it, except for I like, what the heck is this? I've never seen this before, right? Even though I wrote a whole article about it, I, I get it. I've seen it. But if I was looking at this, I would be like, I don't know what this is. What the heck is this? I'm gonna look it up. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. I wonder why we're doing it this way, though. Why don't we just do it this way? I wouldn't ask that question, though, because I already I'm in the functional land. I understand why this is better. But you know, other people that work in your code base, they need to understand it. You need to talk to your team about it. You need to make sure everybody's on board. If this comes into JavaScript, you don't just use it. You don't just put it in the code base. You ask your team and you talk to the company and make a case for why we should be using this. And that's where then you can feel comfortable using it on your projects. And you could have a manager that's like, oh, just put it wherever you want there. You don't own the code when you're working for a company. If it's your project, fine, do it the way you want it, which is how I would write things my way on my code projects. But I also try to make them at least somewhat understandable by other engineers. And the thing is that if you're working for a company, you need to write things in a way that anybody at the company could just pick it up and read it. Even if you're just on your team and your manager doesn't care and doesn't have any oversight, doesn't know front end development or anything like that, it doesn't matter because you need to be writing for the entire company, not just for you. If you get moved to a different team and somebody comes in, they're going to give you a bad rep on it. Your name is on there. It's going to show that you committed this code. So you better be very clear about how you put this stuff in there and why you might find something like this more valuable. Because if you don't understand why you can't explain it to somebody, then it looks really bad on you. It's going to hurt your reputation. So I always have explanations ready. I have lots of explanations. I can tell you exactly all the ways I would write the code that would lead me to this, which is why I would think this is a reasonable way of writing the code. And I like this syntax. I like basically saying I have a value, then I'm going to execute some operation on that value. And that will give me a response to me. That makes more sense rather than I'm going to create a value and then I'm going to return something that just happens to use that value and maybe other values and other things. It does use other values in this example. I don't like that. I like it all together if I can. I ideally like this would be an object here with has stuff here or what I don't know what we're going to call it key and then it would have like value and it would have all that other stuff and those would just get passed to this function. And the reason for that is that you can then take this code and make it more modular, right? You can take this function and reuse it somewhere else now. This is not reusable. You absolutely can't reuse this. It's made, it's purpose built, purpose built. I remember this when I did my talk on tie coupling. This is purpose built. Therefore, it's a one off. It's like you can't reuse it anywhere. This is reusable, even though it probably shouldn't be. It is reusable and there might come a time where you need to make it reusable or unit tested or something. And if you can just simply break this out into a function, then unit test is easier. Now, again, I wouldn't break this out into a function and unit test that you could unit test the whole freaking function or because this is running some kind of style info in the actual code base that you would do a visual regression test on it and check to see if any of the styles differed from some change you made. To it you wouldn't have to do any kind of unit testing on this from what i would expect because you're since it's outputting code that styles something on the screen you want to test to make sure that the styles on the screen are correct not necessarily the code that does this information that somebody else wrote that you're using the library that's going to execute and put this on the screen in, in your styles so i'm rambling here a bit but i want to try a different video format and i thought this would be really fun i think it's fun i like looking at different ways of coding and just making sure everybody understands that i'm not like some crazy insane person that writes code in a weird way i do write code in a weird way but it's usually the formatting and it's not weird to me because it's normal for me. It's just weird to you because you've never seen it that way before. And you probably never seen code this way. But like I said, this has a word. It's called iffy. It's literally on Wikipedia. OK, I bet you if you look explicit return, you're not going to find that on Wikipedia. It's not a popular thing, even though it is a thing like you'll see this in every code base. This is extremely common in JavaScript. It's just not something that you see when you're writing code because you don't write it that way. Nobody you know writes it that way, even though literally every website out there probably has this code in it at the very beginning. That is like the code 
that when the JavaScript execute is, it looks exactly like this. I wish we had the pipeline operator in JavaScript. It would make this a lot easier. You don't have to write your own pipe function and try to make it work. Nobody's going to like this. They're going to complain. They're going to say, oh, maybe it's like slower execution time or whatever. Who cares? This is nanoseconds of execution time. Okay. To, to run this reduce function on this, it's nanoseconds. Believe me, I did a transducer talk. I did a bunch of benchmarks and my benchmarks I run separately. I don't run them all in the same node process. I actually ran them in separate child processes as well because you don't want V8 to start. V8 is a JavaScript execution engine for Chrome that node also uses. You don't want it to start optimizing things during your benchmark. You want to get the raw performance as much as possible when doing that kind of benchmark. You do want to, the optimizations to happen, but you don't want them to happen on later tests that they didn't happen on the earlier tests. So I've done these benchmarks and you can trust my results if you like it. The code's all open source and I've done talks on these topics. I really do like this way of coding where it's reusable code. It's something that you could just take out this chunk and move it out and put it somewhere else. It's like block coding essentially. So what we've done is we created block coding in here, something that you can't do when you write code like this, which is purpose built and single use. And so that's why when I was doing this PR review, I suggested this one instead. There's the whole point of this whole conversation here is this one tweet to explain myself so that people understand why I suggested this and not the way I would normally write it, that I would expect everybody else, including the person who I was commenting on to write it this way. But we're not actually done with the video. Why would I be done with the video now when we could be done with the video later? The interesting thing that's been on my mind this whole time is this function. Once I wrote this as a function it became more obvious to me this one pro would probably be obvious too so to explain what how we can improve this code i'm going to use this example that normally everybody would write and what i'm going to do is explain something here we have this key and a value and breaking this apart is very necessary because when it was in this mode it was harder for me to figure that out although this is when i did figure it out okay but just looking at this i was like hey i can see the pattern here there's one here and there's one here therefore we can merge these together in one function i didn't see that there's an even better way of doing it so notice here we have key value right and then if stuff is true then add a key that will overwrite the key we'll actually have this key twice in here so if is stuff is true it's going to look like this and then javascript is basically going to remove this because it's going to overwrite the value with this one so at that point if they're the same and they both have use the same key why don't we just do this why would we do all this crap if we could just do it more simply this is even easier and then at this point you know what i'm going to do right you, you should know what i'm going to do at this point let's compare it to the old one okay we just removed a ton of code but i'm not done yet okay now that we've done this this is the right way to solve this problem. We had a whole 50 minutes I was talking. I don't know what's actually going to be in the actual video once it's edited, but I just talked about how you could write this with this weirdo suggestion that I made. And there's a significantly better way of doing it where we don't even need to make a variable. And now it's implicit return. We just implicitly return this object and just put this guy in here and you don't even need the parentheses. Yeah, this latest example is much easier to read than the way everybody would normally write it. But it's easier to read than this, obviously, because this this is like just bad here. And I didn't even notice it. But which one's easier to read here? I no, no, this is, I think, a little bit more subjective. Again, I don't like having these things, which it's not really indirection, okay, but it can cause indirection because the key is up here and you're using it down here. It's not built in. This has no indirection, absolutely none, except for technically this is indirection, this is, this is, and, and this is. Because I, I know what these are and they're strings. I know where they're coming from and I know why it is indirection, but it's a different kind. So I don't want to use that word. I think it's not clear. But what I do want to show is that this is a different way of writing the exact same code. You can return an object with this is the property that is the key and now you don't even have to call any functions, do any kind of weird pipeline operators like this to get it to work or, or anything. It's so simple. Here's a ternary that defines the key. Here's a ternary that defines the value. Done. Easy. Now, this is a little bit harder to read if you're not familiar with the syntax. And why TypeScript? This here is, again, what most people should be would be writing. You would normally see this in the code bases. Would highly doubt that this would be any different from what you would see in a code base. Although the formatting might be different and the there might be like 20 other things that are going on here that make this completely unreadable. But this is what most people would write. Very one-off kind of stuff that you can't ever reuse. It's difficult to test and, and pull things out and things like that. That's what I would expect to see just from having been in the industry for so long. And I will write it like this too because that's what people expect but i will make cases for better ways of writing code if i have them available if, if people like a pipe function this pipe function here if people like that i will use it i will absolutely use it if i find a company that we're, I, I work at and they're like hey we love functional code and we would love this pipe function i will use it if i've got rxjs i will use rxjs i'll just put it all over the place and use it where i can where it makes sense obviously because this pipe function doesn't exist and it's completely different on rxjs it's the currying kind which is how you would normally have it i would actually rename this pipe function to something else because it's actually pipe pipeline is what it should be pipeline not pipe but it's pipeline execution i don't know what you would call it ex ex execute pipeline i might call it like um and that would make more sense than what's happening here you're executing a pipeline you're not just creating a pipe that is then a reusable curried function you're executing a pipeline something like that if you want to be you could do it like that too but i would call it execute pipeline and it's very clear to any developer what the expectation is now 
So that's how I would rewrite this instead of calling it pipe. And so I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm curious what you think. Like, write it in the comments. Tell me some feedback. Give me some information on what you think, because I like this better. It's less code. It's all together. Everything that matters is all where it belongs. Although it can be a little hard because the key has a ternary in it. And that's not usually what you're expecting to see. Again, not what you're expecting to see. If you saw code like this all the time, it might not be so crazy. I write code something like this all the time. And to me, this is more readable because I'm so used to it. I've been writing code like this for seven years now. And so this is super clear to me. This is less clear to me. I hate this code. I absolutely hate it. Every time I deal with it, I'm like, God, this is like that old way I used to write code that always had problems. I never felt like the code was good. You know, you get on projects and everybody says, oh man, that code base is so bad and the code is written poorly. They all wrote it like this. Everybody's writing the new code like this too. It always looks like this. That's the one thing those all have in common. You don't ever hear anybody saying like, God, that code base, the code is so bad. It looks something like this or it looks like this. You know, they you never hear that ever, at least in my opinion. Maybe I have, but I don't know. I've never heard that before. Like, oh, this is code is so legacy and it's written functional. That's not something that come across in my career i'm pretty sure if they don't like the way i write the code they would point it out they would be like i ah, can we not write it that way and write it this other way the only time i've really ever done it this way at work is with array prototype functions like map filter reduce and god it becomes very difficult to read reducers when you're not writing them in a pipeline it's much more difficult and the other place i've written stuff like is uh, rxjs i used it at two previous jobs but not all of them but two previous jobs i had i did use rxjs because we had a lot of async state and that is, in my opinion, the best way of handling it. And I did it through Redux Observable, which is, in my opinion, the best way of doing RxJS because it provides you with a framework of combining all your observables together where you don't have to maintain subscriptions and they have a messaging system. It's called message-oriented programming. So you have functional programming, you have message-oriented programming, which I feel like is a superset of functional, but it's not really. It doesn't have to be. You could just write imperative code that way. And then you have, I don't know what you call it, object-oriented programming, right? You have that, but there's another way you write it. Like, what would you call this? This. What what is this called? It's not object oriented. This is just a regular function with some variables defined. This was a standard coding, standard programming. What do you call it? I don't know. Common program. It's not going to be common if people move to functional. So there's functional and there's object oriented. And then there's this very basic kind of coding example, which should have actually looked like this instead. Should have been more like this. And then there's message oriented programming, which I think is honestly a really nice way of doing code, but it is made for async. If you don't use it with async, you're not getting as much benefit out of it for what you're putting in. But functional code, I mean, like I like functional code, but I don't, the current stuff is unreadable without this pipeline operator in some ways because it creates interaction, because you're doing your code upside down. You're creating the function first and then telling me what you're going to pass to it to execute it. it in some ways, this is more readable. Readable, in some ways it's less readable. It's really weird. This is what I would refer to as a compose. And if you had a compose, it'd actually be a pipe that's opposite. It's very confusing when you read articles about it, because I don't think they know what they're talking about in the articles. They always teach you compose first. Why would you teach, teach compose first? Seriously, this top to bottom is exactly how most people write their freaking code. So why would you teach the compose method, which is like the opposite way where you put the value here and you put the code up here? Like nobody writes their code that way. So I wouldn't teach them that initially when I'm saying here's functional programming, because it makes no sense. Pipeline makes way more sense. This makes way more more sense. Okay, so I'm going to end my rant here. It's been like an hour. I've been recording this and I didn't expect it to take this long. I just wanted to talk about some stupid, simple code like this that, you know, needs some work. And then I found out later that the code was even simpler and I could just do it in one little thing here. And without my little TypeScript red underline fix, it just looks like this. It's so much simpler. It's a little bit weird to read though. It is a little bit weird to read. And you might actually think it's weird to read because I'm writing vertically. That's a completely different issue. You're probably not used to it. I've also been writing code more and more like this over the years, but I think around 2017 is where I figured it out. So it was like 20. 15, I started writing more vertically and then 2017 was where I kind of figured it out and I got it and then I basically kept that writing style as whatever projects accepted like at different companies we have different styling rules that auto format and things like that so whatever I get is what I get but this is how I've done it for what five years now I feel like it makes it a lot easier to read because I can skim the code very easily I've gotten a lot of great comments from people but they don't like to be vocal about it because there are a lot of people that are also not liking the way the code is and so I get like private messages about people like this is so easy to skim it and so much better but then like I had people at one company be like like, hey, we should not write the code that way. And I was like, I agreed with them that this particular example was not readable and that there were better ways of writing the code in general where you didn't have that problem. And it was mainly because you code ended up looking weirdo like this. And it was something that we could have just improved and I have it written that way in the first place. And I was like, hey, I know I wrote it that way, but nobody's dedicated any time for me to fix it stuck that way until you if you want to fix it and you got time to dedicate fine. But I'm like working on all these other projects. I don't have time to go back and fix this one if statement that is completely unreadable. You know, I get it. I agree, but it's not because of how I wrote it. The rest of the code is 
fine. It's just this one part that looks bad because I didn't make any variables. And so I had this problem, right? I didn't make the variables here. I just went and did it all in the if statement. And there were better ways of doing it where maybe I could have done something like this. Not sure. There are other ways of writing code, which could be better where I don't have to do this const thing. It just happened to be in that particular example. I, d I just wrote a giant if statement like the if had tons of stuff in it and then it would choose to run the code. It was just that one spot, but that's what people pointed out because it's shown. And so when I'm talking about your reputation, all this stuff, yeah, if I wrote code like everybody else does, that's fine. I just never would want to maintain it. I would absolutely quit the project as soon as I was done writing the code because it, it would become completely unmaintainable. I like to write code that I would maintain because I'm the guy that typically maintains all this code. And at previous companies I've been at, if something goes wrong, they go to me. Like I'm the one that has to fix it. So if somebody wrote in some code and it's not formatted in a way that's like easily, it's not formatted like this it's formatted like this and it has all this extra junk in it and whatever i have to fix that so why would i write code that way knowing that i'm gonna end up having to fix it i don't like writing bad code but if i needed to write something quick and whatever i would rather do it on a project where i never have to be involved again that's why i code the way i do is because i have to maintain it most people don't have to maintain it they don't have to fix somebody else's bugs and stuff like that or maybe they don't have to fix their own bugs i don't know i don't know how people write code and make it hard to read and then have to go back and fix it maybe it's because they wrote it they know how it works i forget my code very quickly within a month i would have forgotten all my code and so if it's not written in a way that i can just quickly skim it and understand it and figure out how it works i'm not going to remember at all i'm not going to know i'm going to get in the code base say ah what did i write here what was this and, and you might think why would you not remember the code you wrote a month ago could be like five or six thousand lines of code since that month has passed and then i'm going back in here and like trying to figure out what's going on the point is that i write a lot of code and the more code i write the less likely i am to remember the previous code i wrote i might remember some cool things i did i'll definitely remember this this is, this is a neat thing that I figured out I, again that I'm not saying I want to put into production, but it's a neat solution to a problem that there are better solutions for that. If we had a pipe function, it would have fixed it anyway. The point I want to make is that you should write code that fits what your team wants so that you don't get into situations where you're writing code that they don't like. So if the team wants me to write this code, I'll write it, but I really don't want to maintain it, right? I don't want to be the one having to go back and fix bugs and code that is written in a way which makes it more difficult for me to maintain that. I would rather write the code like this, at least if I can, which in this case I could. I noticed it just right now, like literally right, I say right now, but it was like an hour ago when I started this recording, I noticed it and I was like, wow, I could write this better. Why didn't I just do that in the first place? And then I wouldn't have had to tweet this, but then I wouldn't have a video idea. So, and this was fun to go through all the different iterations of how you can change this code to execute execute differently but achieve the same result. And only this one had an explicit return. All the other ones had implicit return. So there are lots more ways of doing it with implicit return and they could be bad or good. I don't know. Just tell me your thoughts and don't think I'm crazy. Again, I would write the code like this. If you just watch the end of the video, I would write the code like this because that's what people expect. The only reason I suggested a different way, which was this one, and it looks even worse now because it doesn't have that little tweak that I made earlier with the Boolean thing right here. But the only reason I would write it like this was to explain that there are other ways of writing it that would fit within the bounds of the code base that already didn't have any explicit returns in any of those functions that were passed to this entire object. And so if we didn't want them for some reason, this would be the solution to do that without having a pipeline operator, without having async, without wanting to create an array and map over it and pull the one value back out. This is a suggestion of how you could do that. You've seen all the ways of doing it and this is probably the best one out of all those for not creating a separate variable and creating this mess here now again this in this code base is probably won't even be an issue like at all not even a little i wouldn't even care okay write it like this it's fine i don't care it's not always the case there are lots of places where this is absolutely not a good pattern and it will get you into trouble. This place is okay. This is like one little thing you're defining, one place it's used. As soon as you have lots more of that, it can be a problem. And something like this will be significantly easier where you have a pipeline operator. If you don't have that, you're gonna have to use a pipe function or some other way of doing it. It will get better. There are better ways of writing code that you're just probably not expecting because you don't typically see it that way. You're gonna write it the same every time, but you write code for the occasion and for the team and that people can read at the company in the future. And that would make sense. You wanna make sure people are understanding of this is the reason I'm writing the code this way there is a reason for it and it's going to be like this and I'll make sure to document why I'm doing it if there's something if people really you know don't understand don't understand it I'm going to I'm going to document that because that's how you write good code you write code that fits the situation that you want to write that you want to be in that you want to do you don't write code that is just the same every time because I guarantee you this piece here on the left which you can't see me pointing to it right here this piece here will get you into trouble there are more cases than not, I even think. That would get you into trouble. It's what they teach you and what you're gonna see. And so it's what you're used to, but it doesn't mean it's the right solution for every problem, especially not async. All right, thank you very much, goodbye.